Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for coming. My name is Oscar. I'm a researcher at uh, Universidad del Valle in Guatemala. And I'm interested in program transformation and a rather long title there, Model Driven Data Product Design and Development. So let's break that down. What I mean by that is design and development of large scale data products, such as you would uh, do so with Spark, but using spreadsheets as models. And that's exactly what we're gonna be discussing today, prototyping Spark programs with spreadsheets. So right off the bat, you might not expect to be talking about spreadsheets in a big data conference, but I happen to think we're in the perfect place to talk about that. <laughs> so uh, this is our agenda for today. Um, I'm going to start with the problem statement and motivation that led me to this work. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the architecture. Then we'll uh, go into a little detail in program transformation, specifically code to code transformation, which is the type of uh, transformation we're, we're gonna be talking about. Then I'll go into code generation, two, two ways to generate code based on an abstract, abstract syntax tree and the second one on a parse tree. And finally, we'll discuss uh, spreadsheets as a domain specific language. And I'll go into a little detail into the fact that I consider it to be a rather broad domain specific language. Uh, I'll show a number of demos through the, conf through the talk and we'll close off with questions you might have. So, but before we start, a little disclaimer here. Uh, this is actually ongoing research. And while financial planning and analysis, FP&A, is a very interesting use case, uh, I happen to think that spreadsheets are much broader. We can really model anything, any program with a spreadsheet. People have even, for example, modeled Turing machines with spreadsheets. And I'll, I'll include a link to, to a blog post in case you're interested in reading more about that. So let's start with the problem statement. Um, I started off trying to prototype a financial planning and, and, and analysis uh, pipeline using a spreadsheet with data and formulas as a starting point. And, and you know, the goal was to Automatic, automatically translate that to um, a pipeline running on Scala and Spark. But really, as I mentioned, spreadsheets are broader, right? You can model anything with it. So really the problem statement is prototype any sort of program you can model in a spreadsheet using spreadsheet formulas and automatically translate that to Scala and Spark. Now, a little bit about the motivation. Uh, this has been actually a, a long running project. Uh, back in 2016, uh, also at Spark Summit, I presented the uh, Sparksheet code generator, which back then only, you know, it was only able to uh, translate five Excel formulas or five spreadsheet formulas. Uh, now we're, we, we've inc uh, increased coverage to around 150 spreadsheet formulas. Um, and we're now focused on finding use cases. So FP&A being one of them, but as I mentioned, anything we can model, uh, and we're searching for those. We're, we're interested in finding use cases. But more concretely, the motivation is to take any spreadsheet data set, and by spreadsheet data set, I mean structured data with spreadsheet formulas, and automatically translate that to a Spark data pipeline on Scala and Spark. And, and you know, Scala is not really, we're not close to Scala. We can also, we're also exploring generating Python or because we have a parse tree and, and we'll look at that in detail, we can really generate any target language that we wanna program against. So I mentioned I would discuss the architecture. I'll be rather brief here, it's just a two or three slides. Um, but we start off with, you know, I mentioned a spreadsheet data set, which has formulas and columnar data. There's some black box that gives us code that runs on a Spark cluster 
which also has you know, Elasticsearch running inside of it so that we can index code and take, take a snapshot of that and restore it on an Elasticsearch service or cluster out there. And uh, I'll touch more into why we're interested in using Elasticsearch. That not being the focus of this talk, though. So that black box, that's actually what we've developed. Uh, we call it Sparksheet. And it's something that we've managed to also run inside the Spark cluster. Similar to how we can run Elasticsearch, we can also run uh, this code generator inside, inside the Spark cluster. More specifically, inside the driver node of, of the cluster. So program transformation. Um, a program transformation is any operation that takes a computer program and generates another program. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're taking Excel formulas and translating them to Scala, with Excel formulas being considered actual programs. And as I mentioned, people have even modeled Turing machines, meaning you can really accomplish anything with Excel formulas. And with Sparksheet, we can translate that to Scala running on Spark. So this is broadly how it looks like. We have the spreadsheet data set with formulas and actual data. And we're going to translate that to Scala and Spark. And to start off with, the first demo I want to show is really brief. It's basically I want to show you a spreadsheet model and a complex formula. So I'll switch over to that now. And here we have it. Uh, this is a spreadsheet you know, with um, user IDs in column A. Then we have transactions over time, where here it's only ones and zeros, meaning is there a transaction or was there not a transaction? And all the way to the end here, um, we have a complex formula. what I've highlighted on the top. So back to our presentation. Um, it looks like this, right? Uh, it's a long formula, perhaps difficult to understand without looking at the spreadsheet. Uh, but that's, that's basically what we want to translate. Now on to demo number two. Let's actually translate that formula into Scala code. And I'll switch back again. So I'm going to copy that formula we were looking at. And we have uh, the Sparksheet code generator here. I'm going to copy that over. Increase the size here just so that we can see our, the entire formula there. Hit convert to Scala, and this basically is the, um, the function stubs that are all linked together because something I didn't mention at the start is that Excel is actually a functional programming language. So these are all fu functions from Excel that we generated, and we're calling one function calls another function, basically. So here we generated the code that we can actually run in a Spark cluster. Switch back to the presentation again. So complex spreadsheet formula being translated to Scala. Looks like this. With the code generator, you plug in your Excel formula, generate code. We showed the uh, function, basically the function stubs. And this is, uh, as I mentioned in our agenda, this is uh, code uh, a way of uh, program transformation, which is called code-to-code -code transformation, going from code that is the Excel formulas to code that is the uh, Scala code that we generated. And so in order to generate code, the input either consists of a parse tree or an abst abstract syntax tree. And those are really two different ways in which you can generate code. The abstract syntax tree being a more elegant way uh, you, you basically write a class for each non-terminal node in, in the tree. And then you traverse the tree. And once you visit each of the uh, 
non-terminal nodes that it corresponds to uh, a function or some other non-terminal, we generate the, the code that that particular piece is responsible for. So this is the elegant way. The more hacker way is, or more practical way, is simply to have a parse tree, traverse it, and write a pretty printer um, such that each time uh, we visit a certain node, we simply generate code in the best way possible. So it's not as elegant, but it's very practical. And that's what we've used for Sparksheet. So let's look at an example in a, a little more detail. We have a very simple Excel formula or spreadsheet formula. We're basically summing the contents of two columns, A and C. This is the uh, parse tree for that. We have uh, the function name, sum, the token A and the token C. And this is the code that we're gonna generate. So as we visit the, uh, traverse the tree and visit the different nodes in the tree, we come across sum highlighted here, uh, C highlighted over there, and the other token A. And basically we generate code that sums uh, A and C, those two columns in a table. And to round off the uh, demo part of the talk, uh, I have a, a final demo, which really I'll, I'll show you a video. What, what we're gonna see is basically once we've uh, translated um, Excel formulas and generated code for them inside the Spark cluster, we're gonna see uh, the actual code running in the worker nodes. So something like this. And I'll show the video now. So this is on Databricks, and basically what, what, what I'm gonna show is uh, over time how the uh, worker nodes manage different number of tasks showing that it is executing. Um, and perhaps the interesting thing to mention here is that uh, we've managed to basically parallelize Excel execution or spreadsheet execution of formulas such that tasks which cannot really be accomplished in a spreadsheet can now be run on Spark. So think of um, processing gigabytes of data, which it would, would be unheard of with, with a spreadsheet. Now you can do that kind of thing with Spark. So yeah, we have initially 48. Um, we have the, all the tasks, right? Four on each uh, of a te five worker or te actually 10 worker node cluster. That'll go down to 31, then to four. So as it's processing through, through the data set, translating the formulas and actually doing the execution of the formulas, uh, here we still see four in each worker node, four tasks, still 48. It's about some one minute video, but you'll see it in a few seconds. Now it's down to 31. The tasks are also starting to decrease in each worker node. So from four to three to two. Now tasks are down to four. The execution of the model is almost finished. And finally, well, we still see a, a few here and there. And then it completes. So again, that was um, a Databricks cluster showing Sparksheet, where Sparksheet is running inside the uh, driver node, executing the Excel formulas, well, basically translating them and then executing uh, the Scala code that is generated and going through, in this case, it was like around 500 gigabytes, uh, something which would already be kind of difficult with, with a normal spreadsheet. And I, I show that just here in a summary form. And to, to really to close uh, the talk, um, spreadsheets has a domain specific language. Uh, I happen to think spreadsheets are a very powerful data modeling tool. Um, it allows us to start simple and evolve something into a complex, maybe even 
uh, machine learning pipeline, although we're not there yet, but that's, it, it is in the roadmap. Um, and, and, you know, as I mentioned from the start, uh, spreadsheets are very suitable to many domains. FP&A, financial planning and analysis, being one of them, but really anything you can model, any sort of program you can create with Excel formulas, you can you know, translate and run at scale. So what have we seen? We started off with talking about modeling uh, or creating prototypes of Spark programs using a, a spreadsheet formulas. We discuss program transformation, specifically code to code transformation. Um, briefly talked about two different sort of methods to generate code. One based on an abstract syntax tree, the other based on a parse tree. We and showed a couple demos and, and briefly discussed spreadsheets as a domain specific language. Now, as far as next steps, as I mentioned, we're very interested in use cases. Um, FP, FPNA, of course, being one of them, but anything uh, that can be modeled, we're interested in, see if we can translate it and actually execute it at scale. Um, also, modeling machine learning in a spreadsheet is something we think would be very powerful, very interesting, and so that's something we're working on. Some references. This is the uh, post about the Turing machine that I mentioned. Also a paper uh, that, that was very useful to us and something we built upon. And you know, all the pictures in my presentation come from a music video of Boards of Canada. <laughs> so I thought I should, I should mention that as well. And with that, um, open for questions you might have. I don't know how to use this. <laughs> um, are there, do I just hand it off or? Okay, sorry. Um, so anyone who has questions, feel free to just raise your hand and I'll give the mic to you. Thank you for the talk. Um, so two questions, I guess. I'm curious about your um, parsing of the Excel spreadsheets. Um, you went about it or using like some Yak or just hand code in your own parser, wherever the other is, if any of these codes are available. Sure. So I built upon the work of uh, Ephthemia, Kupelman, and Felina Hermans. Uh, there is uh, an open source parser out there. Uh, what I did is extended that parser to generate code. And the second question was? It is. It's called Excel Parser. Um, is there, a repo? It, there is a GitHub repo. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Uh, hi. Uh, so one question: Is there an assumption of row at a time processing here, or can you refer to data in other rows besides the one you're processing on? Great question. Um, so, part of our inherent or modeling. Uh, uh, we consider everything to be found in one single row. Although if you wanted to reference a column, meaning you wanted data from different rows to also be present, you can do that by building up the spreadsheet in memory and referencing as you're processing every row. But yeah, essentially breaking things down into independent rows is what allows you to sort of scale out Hi there. Uh, I was wondering, do you have any concept of um, Excel table-to-table -table transformation? So from Excel to Excel? Uh, yes, yeah, so say from one Excel table, uh, translating, transforming to another table. So what I've come across is simplifying Excel formulas. Um, sometimes people write these really complex formulas that can be you know, expressed more succinctly, also using Excel formulas. So that's one thing I can think of. The other would be um, doing actually code-to-code -code transformation, but what 
what I mentioned is, is a, an example of that. But if you wanted to also sort of change the structure of a table and, and do that in an automated way, I think that can be done. Thank you. Interesting talk. Thank you. Um, so you're looking at uh, translating formulas into code, but it feels that sometimes spreadsheets contain a lot of information in their structure, the links between different fields and conditional formatting. Is that part of the roadmap of something you're going to look at? So our, our roadmap is really based on standardizing things, uh, starting off with how we model things. So like we were talking about rows, we, we think of rows our, as our basic unit of computation. And so anything we model has to be based on breaking things into, into different independent rows, even though you can introduce columns in there and make it more complex. So same with references or any sort of non-standardized way of modeling, we could start supporting that as long as it's not entirely freeform. So if we manage to uh, come up with uh, some guidance, guidelines at least, uh, we can support those guidelines. All right, well, I guess we ended a little bit early. Um, okay. I think the next session is at 12.20, but if you want to uh, go out into the crowd and ask, uh, answer any questions, feel free. Great. But thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you.